All right, on the feed, I saw that uh, at least all nine board members are here, uh, plus the admin. So we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. order. And since we're here, we'll rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, to the Republic, which is stands one nation under God, indivisible. Okay, we'll move to the uh, roll call with Leslie, please. Dr. Badger? Here. Mrs. Bruckner? Here. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Here. Mr. Gazar? Here. Mr. Kroll? Here. Mr. Musser? Present. Ms. Smith? Here. Mr. Steiner? Here. Mrs. Weaver? Yes, she said here. Okay, thank you. So we'll begin the meeting with uh, item 104 on the agenda. Policy 006 uh, provides for electronic participation in board meetings and places certain restrictions thereon. Given the extraordinary times and circumstances that we find ourselves in, and at the recommendation of the superintendent and with approval of the solicitor, the board is considering exercising its direction, uh, excuse me, discretion as provided for in policy 003 and departing from various policy requirements to include but not limited to the reasons for electronic participation, the number of board members who can participate electronically and the manner in which electronic participation is requested. The board with input and advice from the superintendent and solicitor will continue to monitor the situation and make decisions on a case by case basis to continue or not with meetings in this manner. It is expected that as soon as possible, the board will return to strict adherence with policy 006.1 as currently written. Any questions may be directed to Ken Bean at 814-355-4814. Therefore, um, it is recommended that portions of policy 006.1 included but not limited to the reasons for electronic participation, the number of board members who can participate electronically, and the manner in which electronic participation is requested be temporarily suspended to the extent necessary to conduct needed board business. Do I have a motion for that? So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Steiner and Mr. Badger, thank you. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Bruckner? Yes. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Kroll? Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We'll move to uh, approval of the agenda. It is recommended that the agenda for March 24, 2020 board meeting be approved as presented. So I'm going to... Second. Thank you. That was Mrs. Bruckner and uh, Mr. Kroll. Any changes or additions, subtractions? Roll call, please. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Mr. Kroll? Yes. Mr. Mosser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner. Yes. Thank you. And do we have any uh, comments from the public this evening, either electronically or were there any submissions uh, to, to the email? Mr. Knapp? Okay, thank you. Move to uh, presentation with the uh, budget and Mr. Bean. Hello, everyone. Uh, well, Mr. Nepp's pulling up the budget presentation. This is our first uh, 
I guess, uh, look see at the budget uh, where we're at for this year. Rick, can you pull up the PowerPoint? It's coming slowly. Okay. As we're as we're waiting for that, uh, there'll be uh, approximately six, I believe, six more uh, budget presentations on this. This is just the first go through. Uh, we did have most of this done before uh, our uh, exclusion from the school and from the central office. So uh, this is a pretty good, accurate reflection of where we're at right now. Uh, Rick, if you can go to the next slide, please. We always talk about the Act One index, and we've mentioned this prior, but currently uh, this year for the 2020-2021 school year coming up, the Act One index adjusted for Belfont School District is 3.3%. That means is we can raise the real estate taxes 3.3% as a max. Uh, you can see what it's been in prior years. Again, this is our adjusted index based on the aid ratio. Uh, anything above 0.4, you're allowed to adjust the index based on the formula. We're currently uh, right around 0.5. Uh, the higher that number, uh, 0.4 and above to one, that's uh, saying that you're uh, not poor, but uh, your relative wealth in comparison. For instance, State College is down around 0.2, give or take, uh, last time I looked. Uh, they're rather wealthy, obviously, uh, with the uh, uh, commercial properties and, and businesses and so forth. So you can see we're at 3.3, Bald Eagle 3.5, Penns Valley 3.2, and State College is 2.6, which is the base index. Next slide, please. This is just a little history for everybody to uh, see what we've done in the last uh, 10 years or so. Uh, as I've often mentioned, we've never gone above the index. We've never used exceptions, even though we apply for them and get approved for them every year. And this year is no exception. I'll go over that number shortly. Uh, you can see the last four or five, six years, we've kept it uh, quite low below the index. Uh, this current year, when uh, we are in, we did a 1.5% increase. Well, we could have went to 2.8. And you can see going backwards, we had one, 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 and a 1.3. And back in 2015, we had no increase. We kept uh, real estate taxes flat for that year. Next slide, please. Just showing you where, are, where we are with the expenditures right now. And they're $54,750,000. It's quite early in the process as everybody's aware, but I'll show you where we're at right now. Uh, out of that total salaries and benefits equate 64% of that. That's not much different than any prior years, although that percentage used to be a little bit higher of the total because tuition to other schools, the uh, CPI tuition, the charter school tuition, things like that were less dollars. So it took up a smaller percentage, which drove the salaries and benefits higher. Now that the tuition uh, for both special ed, CPI, charter schools, and those type of things are rising, uh, that's making the total salaries and benefits a smaller portion of the overall piece of the pie. Uh, but you do see that 64% uh, tuition to other LEAs, local education agencies, CPI, as I mentioned, charter schools, uh, various places where our special education students have to go, that's up to 12% now. Principal interest, 8%, and you can see the various other percentages uh, all in the single digits. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, salaries are uh, and always have been and always will be the overwhelming uh, percent of where our budget goes. Uh, that's no different for any uh, school district. As you can see through the years, it's, it's gone up. A, the big decrease several years ago was due to a combination of a new contract ending, new one beginning, and the district losing over $2 million in state funding that year. All, the, uh, all 500 school districts lost significant funds. And just so happened that the contract was ending, a lot of people uh, retired and we were able to, through attrition, not rehire 16 of those positions. They lowered the uh, salaries from 19, over 19 million to 
down close to 17 and a half million. Last couple of years, we've had to uh, increase salaries due to mostly new hires and the combination of a lot of our staff now is uh, younger. We have, I think, four or five teachers that have 30 or more years. Most of them are down in the teens, uh, which is a good thing to have. It's not a bad thing. Uh, but uh, that's where our, where our numbers are. We do have four new positions in the budget, which I'll go over a little bit more later, but that is causing that uh, increase from 19.2 to 20 million point one, which is a 2.8% increase, which isn't bad considering, as I mentioned, that we have four new hires in there, new positions being budgeted. Next slide. As we often mention, the PEASERS, Pennsylvania State Employee Retirement System the retirement rates that the state sets. You can see for this uh, coming year in red, it's gonna be 34.77%. <clears throat> Back in 2010, it was only 4.78%. <clears throat> and this number, as you can see, the future projected rates uh, going up to uh, over 36%. It should fluctuate somewhat inside that number, but it shouldn't go much past uh, 36, at least I, I hope it wouldn't. Uh, but what this means is for every dollar salary we spend this coming year, it's going to cost us $34 or 34 uh, cents, 34.77 cents for every dollar we spend, uh, which can add up, as you can see on the next slide. As you can see, the projected cost for next year, are over $7 million for PEASERS. Again, going back uh, roughly 10 years, it was a little over a million dollars. So for that to go up seven times uh, inside of that period of time, 10, 10 plus years is incredible. And again, this isn't gonna go down for the next 20 years. It's gonna stay in this 35%, give or take a few points range. Uh, the, the system just needs an influx of cash and that's the only way we're gonna get it. Uh, earnings uh, certainly in our current market aren't there. Hopefully they'll uh, bounce back later this year, but uh, they project about an 8% earnings growth on the monies uh, in the state system. And again, we don't hold this money, it goes to the state. Uh, the district withholds this on a quarterly basis, employees on a monthly basis, and we send all that money to the state system and they manage all that. We, the school district is pulled out of that. Next slide. Something we've always talked about as well is charter school uh, enrollments. You can see that uh, right now I have 123 regular ed and 41 special ed students. We're projecting uh, 2,750,000 uh, in, in budgeted costs as well as what we think right now, that's where we're gonna come in. <clears throat> uh, we will have to continue to pay this based on uh, projected legislation uh, right now that we'll have to continue to pay this the rest of the year even if we're on uh, quarantine and not in school. Uh, you can see the rate uh, numbers have been pretty consistent through the years. Committed fund balance. Uh, this is just an update of where we're at. For the future building project, uh, the elementary project, we have just shy of two and a half million dollars. That includes the $250,000 we budgeted in the current year we're in. In the new budget, uh, we also currently have the $250,000 in there, although going forward, I'm not so sure how long I can keep that number in there and still make the 3.3% and hopefully lower, but we'll have to see. Variable rate interest, that's on the variable rate bond issues. We have two of those. Uh, just so you know, the rate will see a short-term uh, huge increase up to 5%, but it shouldn't be long-term. It should come down rather quickly. But if it does stay up there, uh, this number gives us some time to react and if the board would so choose to go to a fixed rate uh, vehicle bond issue on that. <clears throat> for instruction, $300,000. This is built for one of those years or years when the budget is tight and we don't want to stop or hinder our, our curriculum growth and our, our projected plans on what curriculum we're working on. This gives us a little freedom and this number has popped in my head this year already that we might have to delve into this uh, and use some of this money this year. We'll wait and see on that though. Next slide. Other financial issues. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the district, uh, the board approved and we applied for exceptions 
We were approved for $223,730 of exceptions. They're all for special ed. We will not get any retirement exceptions anymore as the way the state uh, worded that exception. It's almost impossible to get that anymore. Fund balance, we're using as board policy anything in excess of 7% of our budgeted expenditures. This year we're using 3,025,000. Last year we used a little over 3,100,000. So that's a decrease of $80,000 that in theory then we need to make that up. And right now, uh, the bottom line to get to 3.3%, I need about half a million dollars, whether that's revenues or expenditures or a combination of the two. We need $492,810 to get to our index of 3.3%. To get to 2%, I need a little over $800,000. And again, that's not in addition to the half million, that's just the total. So I need 500,000 to get to 3.3%, another 310,000 to get to 2 point, uh, percent or an $810,000 total. Next slide. Uh, it's still very early. As I mentioned, we currently have the $250,000 in the budget for the future elementary building projects that was not in that uh, capital, uh, it was not in the committed fund balance because that'll be for next year. So that would add to that number. Right now, we uh, staffing needs are being analyzed, looking at kindergarten registration, class size, retirements, and so forth. We do have a new social worker, which I think Dr. Saylor has mentioned in previous board me uh, meetings. We have a new uh, employee position, our, our employee, in addition to the contracted social worker we currently have. We also are budgeting two new elementary teachers, one at Belfont Elementary and one at Marion Walker. That's due to class sizes, and mostly it's due to uh, sections of classes. For instance, we'll have two fifth grade classes moving out, but I'll have three kindergarten classes coming in. So that nets an increase of one section at that school that we need to uh, uh, hire an additional teacher. We have a new phys ed teacher at Pleasant Gap. That is due to the current year we uh, consolidate and condense some things with, with some um, phys ed teachers across the district that we're able to do it for a year. We knew at the time we we're only going to be able to maintain it for a year and we need to hire a, a phys ed teacher there so we can have the proper allocation of uh, employees at each of the elementary buildings and allow this, the system to work much better. <clears throat> we're still looking at the charter school costs and enrollments. That's a month to month uh, review view for me at this stage. We're also looking at athletic and food service budgets. I know the uh, training, uh, athletic trainer services is gonna increase because we can no longer use graduate students the way uh, they changed uh, some of the, but I'm not sure if, if it's law or the way the academics are on those that you can't uh, use a graduate student anymore. So we have to look at uh, whether we stay with two or we go to three. We have two now plus a grad student. We might have to go to three. I'm gonna have talks with them and see if we can change it that maybe we could do two and then in the spring sports, bring on an additional one. That's a little iffy though, because they would have to come up with the body to be able to do that. And that's Dreyer uh, Physical Therapy. For future board discussions, just uh, so everybody's aware, we have two meetings in April, <clears throat> which will be going over more detail of the budget. I hope to review the revenues at the next meeting and anything else anybody might have. <clears throat> right now, May 12th is the uh, proposed date for the adopting of the proposed final budget. Uh, May 26th, we will review that proposed final budget. And then in June, first meeting in June, I'd like to adopt the final budget. That'd be June 16th. And then June 30th, we would implement the Homestead and Farmstead exclusion. If, uh, things warranted, uh, conditions warranted, we could move the, adopt the final budget to June 30th, which is the last day we're allowed to do it. But uh, that's that's where we are right now in the budget. As I always say, it's it's in in flux, it's, it's in process, we're reviewing everything, a little bit more difficult without everybody being in the office, but uh, we are making that happen. Be happy to answer any questions if anybody would have them right now. Ken, one quick question. Um, do we know any uh, impact from the current situation on the food budget? 
Not right now. It's 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 still too soon. We're pulling some things together. <clears throat> uh, we'll we'll have some savings, obviously, with uh, buildings being shut down and and some uh, additional salaries over time, extra time, things like that, not happening. But we also have some additional expenses for the cleaning and some other things that obviously we're doing. So it's it's still very early in that process, and we're uh, gathering some information. I know uh, we just had to report this to the state today. The cleaning we did last week cost the district about twenty-seven thousand dollars in additional salary and benefits, just to do for the custodians and maintenance come in and clean all everything and disinfect and do what we call a deep cleaning. So that was an additional uh, time, which costs us uh, obviously additional money and benefits to do that. We still have MIS coming in once the uh, clean supplies come in that we're gonna clean all the Chromebooks and everything and disinfect those as well. So there's additional costs there. Thank you. And May I ask questions? if there's been um, any discussion about um, allowing some relaxation in the timelines for the budget that you maybe like the little in the, the taxes um, run into July now or the potential uh, to run to later summer for the final filing? I haven't heard that yet. Um, I wouldn't think so at this stage. If, if things continue, maybe. But uh, I, I've i never seen that. Of course, I've never seen what conditions we're in now. So who knows? But right now, I haven't seen any talk of that. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bean. Thank you. With that, we'll move into uh, approval of the minutes. It is recommended that the minutes from the regular meeting of March 10, 2020 be approved as uh, shown on your board doc. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. That was Mr. Badger and Ms. Fitz, uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Thank you. Uh, any suggested changes or questions? Okay, okay roll call, call please. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Mr. Kroll? Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. And uh, any if we miss anyone or if you temporarily drop offline, uh, we're keeping track of any votes that were not recorded. And uh, if you happen to make it back on the, the meeting, we'll come back and pick up those votes at a later time. Uh, so with that, we'll move to uh, reports and uh, trying to keep things short given the current format. I will say that um, the superintendent search has been, uh, the deadline of course has come and gone. Candidates have been selected for interview and, and oh, uh, I'd like to- I got, sorry, I got. I'd like to uh, find out from board members if we'd like to continue that process during this shutdown. And if so, uh, we'll send out a poll of available dates and times from the, from uh, Dr. Kovac. And once those dates are identified, we'll notify potential candidates and complete the initial interview process. Uh, once we are down to the final two or three, uh, that's when community and others will be involved in the process again and have a chance to offer feedback once those uh, final, final uh, few are known and in prior to board selection of the final candidate. So uh, I guess just uh, asking the board members, do we want to continue that process during this shutdown? If we can do it remotely, yes. See, okay. I disagree. I, don't, I do not think that we should continue it remotely. I think that, first of all, if we are interviewing anyone who could be in another district, they're also dealing with a lot of stuff. So 
if we're pulling them from there or anything else. I just think that we owe it to the community to be doing this with with them in the room. I just don't think that doing it remotely would be a good choice. But if the majority feels that way, then we do it. John, are you saying that we would not interview them in person? Uh, I don't know what I'm saying at this point. I guess I'm asking what the, what the feeling of the board is. We can uh, see if there are any exceptions to be able to meet in some fashion where we're separated. We can choose to postpone uh, until some some future date. We don't really know what the future looks like. Uh, you know, it's basically on a week by week basis. We're looking for guidance from uh, PDE or the governor's office on what we're to do. So uh, I don't really know what that would look like, to be honest with you. Well, I, would My only that, I would prefer that we not wait. I think this is kind of a, a timely situation where Dr. Saylor is going to be done, and I feel we need to do the best that we can, even though it may be virtually. Okay. I was going to ask what Dr. Kovac, um, if if other searches, what other searches are kind of doing, because I would also not want to lose a top candidate if they're applying for other places, if other districts are moving forward. That's a risk that we would take in delaying, because I don't know how long we could be delaying for. Well, let me ask you this then. Maybe uh, uh, would you prefer if we uh, sometime in the next few days move to an executive session, including Dr. Kovac, and then each of you can ask him those questions that you're concerned about? Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's, that's fine. I'd be comfortable with that as well. Okay, so I will reach out to uh, Dr. Kovac and um, uh, for planning purposes sometime over the next few days, We'll do a virtual uh, exec session and just get his feedback on how to proceed. Thank you for that. Um, also, we are in the middle of uh, talks with Hunt engineers and architects. They have completed their initial phase of uh, review on the buildings. And uh, I believe, Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, they've got some initial information they'd like to share with the uh, uh, building committee. And so I'd like to, to create that committee this evening as an ad hoc committee. And it would begin uh, this evening through the end of the, uh, a decision by the district through feedback and cooperation with Hunt engineers and architects. The charge would be to assist Hunt engineers in understanding the concerns from different focus groups in the district, as well as to help communicate and facilitate public meetings and options available as presented by the firm. Lastly, the committee in conjunction with the firm will communicate the collaborative results of the entire process to the board of directors for a final decision on the elementary program. Uh, all meetings would align with policy five and six uh, as currently in place and uh, with needed exceptions for uh, virtual meetings under the current school closure. So uh, from the board, there'll be four members from the board, myself as chair, Mr. Steiner as co-chair, Mrs. Bruckner is a board member, and Mr. Badger is a board, board member. Uh, Dr. Saylor has reached out to the various uh, principals from the four affected buildings, and we have a list of nine individuals from the different areas that are being represented. Uh, there's a slot for four from the administrative team and three from the community, and that will be, uh, I guess, available on the web probably once we have the final names of uh, of the of the committee the total committee will be uh, 20 people including members of hunt engineers somebody has their uh donna could you mute your microphone please thank you so uh that would be that or that would be that are there any questions on the elementary building committee mr gazar the meeting hunt wants to meet friday at one o'clock, I believe, uh, on a, a Zoom or a GoTo meeting. Okay, thank you. No, I'm sorry, it's two o'clock. Uh, probably two since everyone's getting used to Zoom, we should probably stick with that. Okay, it's two o'clock, I apologize, not one. I'm sorry, say it again, Ken? Uh, the meeting is at two o'clock on Friday, not one. Oh, thank you. 
All right, so uh, we'll send an email out to uh, those that have volunteered to be on that committee. And uh, once we have feedback from Hunt with a, uh, a URL or a meeting ID, we'll get that out to the, to the correct people. And uh, that was all I had for my report. Um, Dr. Saylor, are you still with us? I am. Um, Rick, if you can pull that up for everyone. Um, the report looks rather massive, but um, I'm not reading the entire report. It's there for everyone to, to look at. There's a few things I do want to share. First, I want to say a public thank you to Mel Curtis from the YMCA, the hosts, the tons of volunteers that are helping, Laura Fry and our food services department, who are getting all these um, grab-and-go lunches out to our, our students. Um, at the last count, we were serving a little over 100 students daily. So. Um, I'm sure that's going to grow as our sites become more available, but again, uh, I can't thank them enough for what they're doing in such a short amount of time to get this up and running. I also want to thank publicly Mr. Knapp and Britt Malazzo. They had the challenge, they were tasked with um, creating the um, information hub on our website. And then, um, as you'll see later, Arlen is working on an education hub on our website for a continuity of education. So again, these three individuals have been absolutely magnificent in the work that they've been doing to carry out our plans. Um, I do have an explanation on this report as to why um, in looking at continuity of education, we're looking at um, Oh, we're looking at support. We're looking at enrich enrichment and review. We're not looking at um, formal instruction and delivery. Um, down below in the report, you'll see how that is defined by the state. The state has told us that we are required to offer continuity of education. It can be in one and two, form uh, two formats. It can be enrichment and review, or it can be formal instruction. Us, along with most of the other districts in the state, are going with uh, um, enrichment and review because it enables us to be equitable in our delivery of education. We are not a district where 100% of our students have access to the internet. Um, as you're seeing tonight, you know, I'm in Zion and I do not have stable internet connection. We have areas that they do not have Comcast, so they cannot engage any free internet. It's, um, we have many, many parents who have expressed concern of being overwhelmed trying to um, manage the education of multiple students in multiple buildings. They're parents, you know, they're not teachers and they're trying their best. So we're creating a plan that is very user friendly. It's um, designed to um, continue education of our students, but it's also designed to be able to reach all of our students and have all of our students access it, whether they have an IAP or whether they're in a gifted program. Um, as the closure would, if the closure would continue, um, which I'm not sure it's not going to, we do have plans in place that we're starting to work, work with where we may need to address our seniors a little bit differently from the remainder of our, our district. The teachers are meet, meeting virtually this um, week with our instructional coaches and our department chair people. We're developing the specific menu of options for our, our continuity of education plan. And we anticipate rolling that out next week. Rick, if you can just scroll down to the bottom of the report for a second, I want to show everybody uh, a little bit. It's a sneak peek. It's it's not what is going to be the final version, but I just want to give you a little idea of what our our community is going to be seeing. If you can continue to scroll down, there you have the. Um, definitions. You can see the structure as put out by the state as far as where we are going with um, enrichment and review. And if you can continue to scroll down, Rick. There should be, there should be on that report at some point, some drop in. I think maybe you have to scroll up a little bit. Yeah, scroll up a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, first there you see an example of part of the whoops, menu of options that, um, they're, that are being created. They're being created at the primary level, the intermediate level, by grade level and team at the middle school and by course and content 
at the um, senior high school. They will have core areas and they will have special areas. And there are, as I said, offline options as well as online options. So we meet the needs of all of our students and there's access and entry into learning for all the students. If you scroll down a little bit, Rick, to this part, this is a glimpse of the beginning of the site. This is just where the high school site is. Parents can tap onto the high school. They'll be able to see all the subject and grade level menus for learning. Um, there's also the middle school and the elementary site and the home site with the expl explanation of expectations. You know, as, as we shared before, FAPE is our primary concern and that's fair and appropriate public education. And in order to meet that, the only way you can meet FAPE is through enrichment and review. FAPE cannot be met through the formal instruction um, method with online options. I do want to say congratulations to create a little our um, stock market challenge participants took first place. And so congratulations to them. Our high school teacher, Mr. Myers and his crew came in first. Uh, so like I said, congratulations for that. Uh, we do, as always, continue to hire community engage in. Um, I think that's really about it for everything that's included in the report. Does anyone have any questions? Dr. Saylor, um, I, I noticed you said possibly students could return, the earliest would be April 8th. Has there been any discussion about, I know that what the 9th and 10th are already, and that Monday are vacate, or not vacation, Act 80 and other days off, for, they're not student days, correct? Or has there been any discussion about adjusting calendar? Yeah. That's, well, Act 80 days count as student days, and we will probably need to use that as tra an additional transition day for teaching. So they do count as student days. Um, we, we've begun talking about um, the snow makeup day and whether or not we would adjust that and utilize that as a class day. Um, Julie, I'm not convinced we're going to be going back on the 8th. You know, if, we've, if we look at the science, we look at the data, quite frankly, it's the stupidest thing we can do. And I will put that out there quite blatantly. Um, that said, we have started looking at it because there's other things we also have to um, consider. Even if we would be told we were going back, you know, the, the students and the staff that are in the vulnerable groups, we cannot force them. I will not force them to return and put themselves in a vulnerable, vulnerable position. You know, what would that mean for our staffing? What does that mean for our continuing in a traditional manner? There's a whole host of questions that we that we need to answer. And, and yeah, the team is working on that. Um, you know, we're taking it in chunks, right? You know, initially our, our greatest concern was being able to provide those food services and making sure that everyone had those healthy options for lunch. Then our next primary concern was, you know, how are we going to deliver and organize with additional resources first? And now we've come together with bringing the teachers in for virtual professional comprehensive plan for that. And then once we move beyond that, we'll start looking at some of the operational pieces that we have um, to, to move through. It, it really is a, a challenging time. I will say that we meet regularly with all the superintendents across the region, all 13. We meet three times a week. The only one that's a little bit different is State College, who is trying to go for um, formal instruction. But Mr. O'Donnell, Dr. O'Donnell, has to um, internet with his students. We do not. <laughs> We, we absolutely do not. So those are, the, those are the pieces that people have and what you are able to do, not able to do. And one that is, was going to be voted on possibly today, now looks like we'll go to um, the floor for vote tomorrow. Um, as far as cyber school goes, because everyone across the region, all districts are concerned, well, if we can only do uh, uh, enrichment and um, review with our students because we have to meet FAPE, we have to make sure our IEPs are met, we have to look at equity, we have to look at, at making sure we're not extending or widening the um, learning gaps, 
you know, and cyber schools are at some point allowed to go full blast, you know, we have this mass exodus of our students. Uh, we don't necessarily believe that's going to happen. We believe our plan is really robust. But that said, in this um, new legislation, districts would only have to pay for any students that are enrolled in cyber schools as of March 13th of this year. So it's a nice little safety cap on what could be um, potential expenses. So that, that's a really nice piece of this legislation moving forward. Um, we are still looking for clarification as to what we do with our seniors. We know that we want to do more than um, uh, enrichment and review with them. We'd like to, you know, we, we are, our intent is that everyone graduates. Our intent is that all those pieces continue to move forward so our students can move on to the next phase of their lives. We're trying to get clarification from the state what that means as far as FAPE is concerned. If we only have one level, one grade level that we move to a different method of instruction from the others. So again, we're still waiting for clarification on a lot of pieces. Thank you, Dr. Saylor. Are there any questions? I, I do believe that I might have saw something today that State College uh, might not be looking at doing uh, the online uh, component either. I don't think that's accurate, Jeff. I participated in several lengthy me Zoom meetings today. I believe they are going forward. It's just a question of which day it is that they're going to start requiring attendance and start grading. All right. Thank you, Scott. I, was, I guess another question I had to Dr. Saylor is um, the, the resources, the website, all of that, that's great. Um, but again, if there are folks that don't have that access and we don't have administrative offices that are open to kind of get any material like hard copies of material to parents. No, uh, we, Julie, we have a plan for that. What we intend okay. to do is once it's up and running, it has had paper versions of the menu and we intend to distribute them through the um, drop and go lunch system. Thank you. Um, that way they're, they're out in the different areas of the community for anyone to pick up if they want to pick them up. We're not putting any other staff out in the field and we're making, we're using, a, we're efficiently using the systems that we already have in place. That's great, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Saylor. Any other questions? I, yes, I have a question. Is there a plan maybe for the future for us to really get a handle on who does not have internet access for the future? Oh yeah, that's been something that we've been um, doing before we did survey a couple years ago. Um, it's, it's so much more than the access though, because what we're hearing from our parents is our parents are not technologically savvy to some extent too. And with online learning, it's just like handing a, a student a packet, right? If you don't have the support there to ensure that it's successful for them or the motivation for a student, it's not going to happen. You know, it's the same way with what we see with our cyber schools now. We have really poor um, results coming back as far as academic retention, as far as, as learning, as far as the overall scores of our students. Um, we know that we can't meet the needs of IEP students. What we really have to figure out is how we could enable some sort of hybrid model with um, additional methods of support. I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe artificial intelligence comes a little way <laughs> in this at some point. But yeah, Donna, we're, we're looking for that. It's, it's, just, um, it's just so complicated, it's just so complicated. You know, when you want every child to have um, access and you don't wanna just focus on what the majority has, I think at the last count, we might've had 70 or 72% access, um, but, Man, it, 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 it's, it's a dilemma. I know, I know we will all figure it out, but it's not going to happen overnight. Another small piece to that puzzle is uh, maybe say a parents or a single parent even that has multiple children trying to have three or four kids in different grades all at the same time learning and it's hard enough for the for the teacher, let alone the parent to, to face that situation. So a lot of, yeah, a lot John. of parts. And that's exactly the feedback we're getting. And that was the whole reason behind the sentiment that we that we sent out because we want everyone to know that kids are going to be okay. Kids are going to be okay. And our teachers are phenomenal. And once we get back to whatever the new normal is, our teachers will make sure the kids 
enter where they are and we move them to where we need to be. We in education have absolutely no doubts about that whatsoever, none whatsoever. And if parents continue to read with their children or encourage them to read, play games with their children, spend time talking with their children, having that engagement in their action, our children are gonna re rebound. Um, you know, we wanna make sure that we have methods in place that they don't have necessarily a huge slide that they can continue to review what they are already um, beginning to understand. But we, we know everyone's gonna be okay. We actually, we absolutely have 100% um, faith in that one. What, what we're most concerned about is the anxiety that this is creating right now, the anxiety that's creating in students, the anxiety that's about to be able to wear 6,000 hats and do everything for everyone in their family and be more than what they, can really be at this time. And that's that's gonna cause more um, angst and, and mental health concerns and um, frustrations for families than not necessarily having a formally delivered curriculum during this period of time. Okay. Um, so I think uh, if it's okay, we did get an email in. Uh, thank you, by the way, Dr. Saylor. Uh, before we go forward, uh, we did have one comment for uh, from the public, so I don't know. Do you want to send that to me, or oh, let me? Oh, okay. Well, then I'll get to it uh, later down. I'll have to pull that up. So, with that, um, uh, Mrs. Burnerford, are you with us this evening? I am. Good evening. Good evening. I don't have a report tonight, unless uh, you have a question or something I can try to answer. I would attempt to. Does anyone have, have a, question a question for uh, Mrs. Burnerford? Yeah, I do. Um, where are we at in terms of the comprehensive planning for the school district now that, that kind of everything's out of the way? That's a very, very good question. Um, our buildings didn't get to finish their building uh, projects that they were doing at each building level because we were taken out of school. Should we go back? Um, that might be something that our teachers can get on as part of the return too. As far as uh, the district-wide one goes, there's probably no way to meet virtually and to go through that entire process and to engage the community the way I really want to. So I'm thinking that um, we do have till November 30th. And if we have to work on some of it through the summer or into August or September, we're still fine. Um, it might be expedited a little bit, but I still think we're okay timeline wise. Um, it's nearly impossible to try to review data and to go through those action plans and things without some sort of face-to-face -face um, interaction and good conversation that we can have. So basically, uh, my proposal is that we put it on hold for now, um, unless we're, we get some other direction from the state too. Thank you. Tammy, I, yeah. this is Donna. I'm not oh. sure if uh, Dr. Saylor <laughs> talked about this or not, but are teachers able to work on any curriculum, writing any curriculum or doing anything like that? That's yes. a really good question. Um, we sort of wanted to get something, some like learning plan or review and enrichment, as she said, plan with the teachers first. I actually did just talk with uh, Mr. Fitzgerald today because I would like to get started on the social studies curriculum as soon as we possibly can. Um, we need to get these, these activity menus and things in place, but we're thinking when I talked to Mr. Fitzgerald and, and um, Mrs. Buhal, who is the, the middle school social studies chair, that we need to see what's going to happen. And if we aren't back, then we're going to probably hit the ground running on the 7th of April. Now, see, I can do a lot of that, um, show them what they need to do. You know, you've been through this curriculum process. You can show them what they need to do uh, through Zoom and through these virtual meetings and things. So that's definitely on the horizon. Uh, we had already planned to try to get a head start on the social studies curriculum this year. Uh, it's not up until next year, but we were really trying to get ahead of it anyway, so this actually might be a great opportunity for us to be able to do that. I also talked to Mr. Fedison today because world languages are coming up soon. And we talked about if we're out a long time that maybe we'll try to move some curriculum um, forward and writing curriculum with that group as well. So yes, that's definitely on the horizon. And, and while you're talking, um, there's also some things out there with professional learning that our coaches are thinking that, you know, they don't have time or teachers don't want to be pulled out of their classroom, that they might be able to do some Zoom meetings and do a little bit of virtual professional learning um, should we be out for an extended period of time too. So yes, those things are out there and they're on the back burner for right now till we can get the um, these activity menus and things out to, to um, kids and parents. And things. 
Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mrs. Uh, Berniford? All right. Um, while we're still close to uh, Dr. Saylor's report, the question that came in for uh, comments from the public is from Mr. Oskin. And he uh, asks, how will the school cancellation affect the remainder of the school year? Will kids have to make up this time? Uh, and can Chromebooks be sent home so kids can work on some of their schoolwork? Or is e-learning a possibility? It sounds like the last one was addressed. But Dr. Saylor, if you can address the other two there. Sure. Um, the state is not penalizing anyone for not not being able to make the 180 days. If we would go back, um, if the students would come back on or about April 9th, um, and again, I'm not anticipating that, but if they would, we would probably look at, uh, by readjusting some of our professional learning days to act 80 days, we may only have leverage of one there. And by um, utilizing um, the snow makeup day, we might be making up two or three days um, technically, they might not be in school, but technically, all right, we don't anticipate extending the school year because we're already going into and in through the second week of June already. So we, we don't anticipate doing that. We anticipate keeping our graduation schedule on track. Um, right now, that's where we are with the, with the governor's guidance. Some districts are looking at going to the end of June and making it up. Um, uh, we're not at this point. Um, as far as sending Chromebooks home, we've had lengthy conversations around that. And the problem comes into play. Um, right now, the, the, the Chromebooks, uh, the secondary, if they took their Chromebooks home with them, they have them. The elementary has never taken their Chromebooks home with them. If we drop Chromebooks, we would have to schedule um, independent drops for parents to come and pick them up outside of the school because we would not have anyone enter the schools. You did hear the cost that it cost us to do the deep cleaning of the schools. We don't want to undermine that process by any extent. Plus in talking with our technology department, once those Chromebooks come back, they would all have to be collected and re and, de and disinfected again before they're brought into the general community. That in itself is a horrendous task so no, not at this point. We're not looking at that. It's all going to depend upon the length of the closure and where we go from that. So again, as of now, the answer is no. Could that change in the future, depending upon whether or not the closure extends for a long period of time? Absolutely. You know, that's why I want to emphasize that everything we talk about is very fluid. There's really very little that's set in stone. Everything is, is up for um, re-examination re and change based upon guidance and dates and what we get from the CDC and the Department of Health and the Department of Education. Um, but that primarily is really one of the reasons why our teachers and working on their continuity of education plans are putting in place ample methods of continuing education with and without devices. So that way, if you don't have a device home, it doesn't matter. You're gonna be able to continue your education. If you do have a device at home, fine. You're gonna be able to continue your education. You know, parents have said to us, you know, we have multiple children. We don't have multiple devices. It's complicated. That's okay because not everyone has to be on a device at any given time, if at all. So I really wanna emphasize that with the community. I, I really wanna emphasize that with the community. It's not about the technology. It's about the level of engagement and what you're being asked to do to continue your learning. And, and I know everyone goes right away to, oh my gosh, oh, I'm learning. That's the best thing we can do. We got to do it. No, 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 no. There are so many ways to address this issue. And our teachers are amazing. They've got it under control. Um, I, I'm overwhelmed and, and you know amazed by them every single day when we have these conversations and more ideas coming in. You know, along that same line, we created a spreadsheet um, with all of our professional staff asking them what they're doing to keep connections up with their kids. You know, Would they be willing to schedule some sort of office hours and what would those office hours would be? And every single teacher has popul populated those spreadsheet sheets and the things that they're doing and the way they're connecting and continuing that communication is just unreal. It, it's unreal. Um, I really think if um, everyone just has a little patience, gives them the chance to finish the pieces they're working on this weekend, um, this week with the rollout after the weekend on Monday, I think everyone's going to be pleased. They're not going to be overwhelmed and kids are going to get what they need. I know that I may, that may or may not answer all the questions, but that, that's where we are. 
Thank you. And, and this one might be a little redundant. There's a second uh, question. It says, uh, there's a high probability that students will not return to school this year. What exactly is the district doing to prepare for that? Should they not be surveying parents at this time to see who does and does not have internet access? Preparing for who would need different instruction? And why are some schools doing a good job of keeping in contact with parents and offering supplemental optional instruction and some schools aren't sending anything at all? I think most of that you've addressed. Yeah, from our district, we've, we've sent out a lot of communication. You know, I, I, I apologize if people haven't received it, but we have used every means possible to us to generate and communicate on a regular basis. And again, I also encourage anyone who can um, to go to our communication hub, which we are keeping up to date every single day. Um, I know that across the, uh, cr across the region, again, demographics are very, very different. We know schools that aren't gonna be able to do any online learning at all. Um, we know schools, uh, districts that are gonna be able to try to move everything online because they believe they can address, they have a small percentage of students with IEPs that are, do not have um, um, intensive needs and they believe they can address it. Not all districts have that same um, luxury. So uh, again, um, I know our principals um, have been reaching out and Tammy can jump in and share some of the things they've been doing. They've been doing um, FaceTimes. They've been um, sending out regular messages. I've seen them come by. I've seen their emails go out. So again, I don't know um, if the question is, the difference of communication between districts or the dis difference of communication amongst individual buildings and the principals, we would need clarification on that, but I know they are all reaching out on a regular basis. Okay, thank you. And one last housekeeping item before we move on. I see uh, Mrs. Bruckner is with us. Uh, Kristen, are you there? Yeah, I, my, I cut out for a little bit. I've been back for a while, but. Yeah. Uh, we had a vote on um, approval of the minutes, item 401. And yep. we just want to check with you to see if you had I, any. It was a yes. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. With that, we can uh, get caught up. Are there any comments from the Education Association this evening? And from the Support Personnel Association? Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, we'll move to item 601, the treasurer's report with uh, Mr. Bean. The treasurer's report is included on your board docs packet. If there's any questions, be happy to answer them. Seeing none, it'll be filed for audit. No, it's hearing none, it'll be hearing filed for none. audit. Well, I'm seeing it on my screen. <laughs> All right, you too. Said the <laughs> no bodied voice. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bean and Mrs. Burniford. Uh, item 701, it is recommended that the board approve the board bill list associated with the various funds for February 2020 as listed on board docs. I have a motion for that. So moved. Second. Thank, Thank you. you. Who, Who was, was that? Donna. Mark. Donna and Kristen. And Kristen. Okay, thank you. Got that. Is that Kristen? Okay, uh, roll call, please. Mr. Kroll? Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Kazar? Yes. Okay, and uh, we'll move down to item 801. Yes, yes. Oh, was that Kristen? Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, just a reminder, when uh, we're not doing roll call or other things, if we could all keep our microphones muted, it stops a lot of the echo in the system, so. With that, we move on to uh, 801. It is recommended that the board approve the investment report of February of 2020. So, motion for that. So moved. Second. That was, uh, I believe, Mr. Kroll and Mr. Steiner. Any, Any questions, questions or comments? 
Roll call, please. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Mr. Kroll? Yes. Okay, motion carries, thank you. And with that, we move to um, consent agenda. I'm back on, I keep getting kicked off. I don't know if I missed a vote. The, uh, we had the investment report. Did you vote on 801? Do you have her for 801? Yes, at the end I did, thank you. Yes, and 701, you have her for that? Yes. Yes, we have you, thank you. All right, uh, consent agenda items 901 through 1002. I have a motion for those. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Second. Second, uh, second Mr. Badger. Thank you. And uh, we'll do a roll call, please. Ms. Smith. John, can you go back? I wasn't sure. Are we voting on signage for Roger Stadium? Yes, we are. Did you want that removed? Yeah, because I do have a question about that. Okay. So there is already a motion on the table. Scott, do we need to do anything special there or can we just go back and start that over? Sorry, start it over. I, I amend my motion to exclude 1002. Okay, so we have a motion for consent items 901 through 1001. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second from Mrs. Fitzgerald. Thank okay, thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Steiner. Yes. Mrs. Weaver. Yes. Dr. Badger. Yes. Mrs. Bruckner. Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Mr. Kroll? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? I'm sorry, Mr. Musser? Yes. We're gonna try Mrs. Bruckner again. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank hey, you, Kristen, Mr. if it isn't working, maybe you can just do the thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> I, I keep, it keeps kicking me out. I don't, I don't have any problems with GoToMeeting. For some reason, Zoom does not like me. Okay. I'm sure it's not personal, but. I'm sure. And we're, and we're neighbors and mine's working. So that's weird. All right. All right. Item 1002, uh, it is recommended that the board approve the signage for Rogers Stadium at a cost of $265 each yeah. for a 24 by 36 aluminum sign as seen before you. Do I have a motion for that? No move. Thank, Thank you. you. And a second? Second. second. Mr. Musser and Mr. Steiner. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, Mrs. Smith. Yes. Is it just a typo? Track will be open for number one? Is that going uh, to be correct? I'm sure it is. Hopefully that's not the okay. proof. Yeah, hopefully. And I don't know, we had talked about the public not being able to use the track while students are using it officially as in PE class. Should that be part of the rules for public use? I, our talk about this was it was covered uh, under the section where, uh, where is it? I apologize for I a second. I'm, I don't see it, Ken, because there was one, there was supposed to be a thing where um, it, the track was open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. unless in use by um, the, the student, you know, student designated activities, something to that effect. And I don't see that on the sign. I don't either. I thought it was on. It was on there and the latest week, 
we had this change right at the last moment. Uh, maybe that dropped off. We'll have to uh, get that back on. That's an important piece. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was my problem. Yeah, that uh, uh, Mr. Bartos on watching right now. So we'll make sure that gets back on there. May I ask how many Along of these signs the are you making? Correction. We were planning on uh, two of them, Mr. Badger, one for each entrance. Thanks. And who else was in there? Oh, I was just reminding Aaron to make sure we take care of that typo that Donna caught too. Okay, and uh, just out of curiosity, how would someone planning to come to the track to use it from the public know what the schedule is for, uh, I guess, whether it be for a scheduled event during the day or whether it be some official use in the evening, how will they know how to plan their, their usage? That would be very difficult to say uh, with all the practices and such. Uh, I don't know whether they could look on uh, the website and see for, uh, you know, uh, contests, uh, competitions would be on there. Uh, practices would be set probably about the same time every night after school in the spring and in the fall. So uh, it, it's hard just to put a, a, a flat uh, time on there. Yeah, yeah scheduled time. Like, That's why I was thinking there. Well, we can figure that out as we go, but I, I can see that being a concern if I was going to to get there to use the facility and then find out every time I went it was in use so hopefully we can figure out some solution to that yeah we could we could always uh publish in the fall and the spring uh you know practices will be from this time to this time or something to that effect or you know we could even uh put you know some temporary signage at the stadium for that so people when they they're up there they see that perfect thank you Okay. Um, any other questions? Yes. John, I have a question. Yes. So on the sign, it said no wheeled vehicles. I think that's the word that it used. So does that mean if you have a child who might be in a wheelchair and you want to go for a walk, you can't put your child, you can't, do, you know, go on the track and walk and push your child on the, with the wheelchair? Good question. Anybody have the answer? I'm not sure. Say, the I, yeah, I'd say, Kim, it's something we have to look into that is there because of the uh, damaging the surface of the track. Um, I would think that there's there's a way that, that someone could push their child along the concrete areas to walk. But again, I don't have the answer for that. And that's something that Aaron can look into. Okay, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions on uh, the signage? Okay, uh, roll call, please. Mr. Steiner. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Mr. Kroll? Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Actually, I think Kristen jumped in and said yes. So I, I am a yes too. I think we both said yes at the same time. Thank you. Okay, that will move to item 1101. Sorry, Sorry with that, we'll move to item 1101. It is recommended that the board approve the reading clinic to be held this summer at Benner Elementary by Jody Porter. Do I have a motion for that? So, so moved. moved. Dr. Badger Second. and Ms. Smith. Thank you. Any discussion on that? This I, I, I'm hoping by summer things will be cleared, but is there um, 
a decision if, if building might not be open or are there virtual options for this, I'm wondering? Um, that, that would be, um, the virtual options would be whether or not Jody feels she'd be able to deliver them in that method. But again, this would be contingent upon the ability to uh, meet and, and have the buildings open. Um, you know, maybe something where she looks at if um, hopefully by the summer we're not in um, as such severe social distancing and our groups are opened a little bit and if buildings would still have to be happen to be closed based upon um, the governor's recommendations, we may be able to have this at um, a library or something to that extent, but her proposal as it stands without any um, changes would be contingent upon the ability to have our buildings open. Okay, any other further questions? All right, roll call, please. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Mr. Crow? Yes. Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Okay, motion carries, thank you. Uh, item 1102, it is recommended that the board approve the authorization of the business office with supervision and approval from the superintendent and the business manager and ratification by the board when it next meets to pay bills that become due and owing. I have a motion for that. So moved. Mr. Kroll, and a second? Second. Second. Mr. Steiner, thank you. Any questions, Any questions comments? Second. Okay, if there are no uh, comments, then we'll do roll call, please. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Yes. Mr. Crowell? Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. <clears throat> Item 1103, it is recommended that the board approve the adoption of the following policies in accordance with board policy 009 and become effective immediately. They're listed before you on board docs. I have a motion for that. So moved. Second. Second. Dr. Badger and Ms. Smith, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move to roll call, please. Mrs. Bruckner. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Yes. Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Mr. Crow? Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Uh, 1104. Wait, wait for the update here. Here we go. It is recommended that the board approve to move the following policies to committee as they all have had comments and questions. Those policies are before you. Do I have a motion for that? So moved. Second. Ms. And Mr. Steiner, thank you. Any questions or comments? Has, has the committee been identified or? 
Uh, yes, we, we formed the committee before and uh, I have uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald, Mr. Kroll, myself, and Ms. Smith. And then of course, uh, Dr. Saylor and uh, we'll pull in PSBA if, if necessary. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Gazar, will we be discussing at our first meeting exactly how we are going to go through the process? Yes. Because we just adopted a policy, which is code 009, that does outline a couple things. And I was reading it this afternoon. We must have two meetings, a total of two meetings. And our three steps are to distribute the new policy, step number one, Step number two, the board members react to the policy. And step number three, discuss and finalize. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the questions and concerns that were already raised about these particular policies, for example, would get hashed out in a committee so that we can get through uh, all those answers and concerns that anyone might have. And then once the policy committee is satisfied that it's ready to put to the board, policies will then come before the board for in accordance with policy nine, which is it will be distributed for comment and we'll have an initial discussion on that. And then at the very next meeting, uh, we could actually vote on those to be accepted. You're still muted there, Ms. Smith, there you go. Unless there's a lot of discussion over something that we changed, then we'll have to go back again to the drawing board and, and make the suggested corrections. Absolutely. Well, it, it may not go back to policy. It may stay before the board at that point and just have the changes made and then start, start over again. So once those changes are made, then it'll come back before the full board and the process would start over. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? All right, roll call, please. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Yes. Mr. Gazar. Yes. Mr. Kroll. Yes. Mr. Musser. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Steiner. Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Thank you, Mrs. Bruckner. That works well. All right, motion carries. <clears throat> uh, item 1105, it is recommended that the board approve the retiring of the following policy, which is number 008 for an organizational chart. So a motion for that. So move. Mr. Second. Steiner and Mrs. Fitzgerald, thank you. Questions, comments? All right, roll call please. Mr. Kazar? Yes. Mr. Kroll? Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Uh, item 1106. All right, uh, for information, when a school district closes a school or schools because of a contagious disease, it is nonetheless required by section 1153 of the school code to continue to pay the salary of teachers. We are in the midst of a governor ordered two week additional closure of school because of the COVID-19 virus. We will continue to pay teachers salaries during the period of closure because of this requirement. We are under no legal obligation to pay any wages to our hourly rate employees during this two week closure. The administration believes, however, that during the two-week closure, we should continue to pay the hourly rate to employees according to the usual weekly work schedule and is recommending that we do so. 
Should the governor, governor order closure, closure continue beyond the current two weeks, the administration will evaluate the situation and come back with additional recommendation. Therefore, it is recommended that the board approve the authorization of the administration to continue to pay hourly rate employees according to their usual weekly work schedule during the entirety of the current two week governor ordered closure. Do I have a motion for that? So moved. Mr. Kroll? Second. Dr. Badger, thank you. Questions, comments? Um, I want to jump in here and add a piece. Uh, we are working on an MOU with our, um, our, our um, support staff and Scott had it finished up just right before the, before the meeting, which is why you don't have it here now. We have been working on it all day. Um, not last minute thing, just had to wait until we got further guidance from the solicitors and the um, state, which came in yesterday. Um, so that basically is going to be reiterating the same thing that we have here. They know that moving forward um, with this closure, they will, we will not be um, utilizing um, overtime pay because they will be working under the hours that they would be working. And um, with the Senate bill that's in um, a legislation, that's, in, that's up for um, vote now, there's also a clause in there that no employee will be paid more than what they are normally compensated, nor will they be paid less than what they are normally compensated throughout this coronavirus um, crisis. So it will basically pretty much also take care of itself. But I do want you all to know that we have had the conversations with our associations. They are aware this is not something that's blindsiding anybody. We're trying to make sure that we do the best by our employees and still um, remain within um, the guidelines that are being presented to us. Thank you. I Any do want to uh, talk about extra duty, extra pay and how that works. Is that part of this or has that been um, discussed? Extra duty, extra pay is just that. It's extra duty, extra pay. For the coaches in the spring that have already put some time in or have to put time in after the closure, they would be prorated for what they are doing. But because it is extra duty, extra pay, if they are not working on something during this closure, which they would not be, they're not gonna be compensated for the time that they are not, not doing anything, but they will be compensated at a prorated rate for what they have done or will need to do once we return or in preparation for the next year. Awesome, perfect, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hey, roll, hey, roll call, please. Mr. Crow? Yes. Mr. Musser? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mrs. Weaver? Yes. Dr. Badger? Yes. Mrs. Bruckner? Mrs. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gazar? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. And, uh, and uh, do we have any items for future discussion to bring before the board? I am so sorry, but I missed something in one of the policies and I guess I didn't realize, um, plead ignorance, uh, the one that relates to student travel. I, there was an error on there. Can we bring that up the next time? Was it just a typo? There was a, a suggestion in there that now is in the policy and it wasn't addressed. Uh, well, let's, uh, we'll take that up with Dr. Saylor and just send her the comments and see if it's, if it's uh, doesn't change the meaning of the policy or the intent of anything, I think we can fix the typos. Uh, however, it's it does, not a we'll typo. It it's something that someone suggested we add and it was not in there. Okay, well, but the comment is written as policy. That's okay. We can we can take a look at it. We'll talk okay. about it in committee. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. All right. Any others? I'd like to extend some thanks. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank our parents and our community uh, for being very patient and understanding uh, during a very. Uh, exceptional period of transition and uncertainty. Um, I'd like to thank 
uh, the administration uh, and all the staff who are working um, so hard to be able to transition um, into what we're doing right now, as well as everything that they dealt with in the run up to this when it was highly chaotic, things changing literally every second. Um, a lot of lost sleep, um, a lot of plans that got blown up, uh, you know, just a, a lot that needed to be done. Um, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Uh, Gazar for his uh, steady um, uh, presence and, and uh, thoughtfulness. Um, and I'd like to thank my fellow board members uh, who also were understanding during the transition periods where people didn't know what was going on, but everyone hung in, hung tight. And I know that all the board members are out there talking to everyone in the community, trying to help them better understand things and support what the district is doing too. So just a big thank you uh, for everything that everyone's doing right now uh, to be able to help our community come together and do what we need to do uh, for our students and for the, the children in the Belfont community. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. And uh, I would have to echo many of those comments. Thank you as well for uh, covering for me uh, at the last meeting. And uh, little did you know this is where it would head, huh? <laughs> but anyways, uh, uh, everyone involved, the administration, the teachers, the support staff, the, the volunteers that are handing out meals, it, it, it really is an entire community. And I think uh, Dr. Saylor had mentioned the, the work that the YMCA is doing to help us. And there are so many others. Uh, it's, it's just nice to see everybody come together and solve community issues and uh, uh, keep the keep the bickering aside and, and stick with the positive. So that's, that's nice. And I'd like to also say thank you for that. Um, so with that, are there any other uh, comments or items for future discussion? Okay, entertain a motion to adjourn. No move. Mr. Steiner, thank you. Second. Mr. Dr. Badger, thank you. Uh, we'll have to do a roll call on that just because of the electronic format. So we'll do a roll call, please. Dr. Badger. Yes. Mrs. Bruckner. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Yes. Mr. Gazar. Yes. Mr. Kroll. Yes. Mr. Musser. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Steiner. Yes. Mrs. Weaver. Yes. Thank you. Uh, meeting is adjourned. And Dr. Etter, uh, did we need to do anything executive session on uh, legislation or are we good for later? I think we're good. And I think as Dr. Saylor had alluded to, uh, there was a bill that we thought might be voted on today, but it looks like it, um, unless they're still in session tonight, I don't know, looks like it will be bumped till tomorrow. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you all for uh, our first virtual meeting. And hopefully we'll, we'll learn some more etiquette as we go and, and get some more functionality in, in this room as well. I apologize for the echo, but we'll, we'll figure that out moving forward. So thank you all. Have a good evening. Night. Night, everyone. Night. See ya.